everybody. Economic Ninja here. Hope you're doing great on this beautiful Sunday morning. On my way to the fire station, I thought I would talk to you this morning about something that's been on my heart lately, and I'm going to tell you some stories about what it was like when I started preparing for all this craziness that's hitting the earth. When I started preparing, it was in 2010, and everything was starting to look pretty rosy. We were getting out of the Great Recession. You know, we didn't really hit bottom until 2012. But God impressed upon my heart to start preparing for something really big, something that he was going to do on this earth to the economy, to wake people up, to shake people. I was also shown way ahead of time things that were coming on the earth, like that big flu event that happened. And uh, to say that it seemed like I was a total nutcase running around, buying up food and doing all kinds of stuff, buying silver was an understatement because the things that were shown was shown quite frankly, it was very scary. And some of those things have not happened yet. Matter of fact, most of them have not. And I get questions all of the time, especially from people that are just starting to wake up and they're saying, you know, what can I do? Like this is happening right now. The facts are in a fiat currency, a fiat society, when you understand how money is created and how the money changers, the people in control, the puppet masters pulling all the strings, when you start to realize how politics work these days, it's nowhere near what our founding fathers intended for our country. You know, when you understand, um, not super PACs, but like, you know, lobbyists and how they all work and all this kind of stuff and how people are paid off, you start to see the, the greed that runs the system. You get to be really let down. So it seems like everything's falling apart all the time, correct? And the people that are more in the know understand more and more how dire the situation is until it really hits a crescendo and it collapses. And we're starting that right now, this phase, right? And everything, that's what people don't understand too. They always expect, a lot of people expect the apocalypse. You have like three different types of people, people that expect the apocalypse and everything's going to crap. We're going to, uh, uh, we're going back to caveman days. Then you have the people that like nothing ever changes. We're fine. You're you're just scared. And then they just run into the, the wall head first, right? They lose their home. They lose their cars. They lose their job, all that stuff. And then the cycle repeats. Then you have the people that are sort of the mid, like like the fence sitters. They just don't know which way to go. Um, but also in that group, I see a lot of really solid people that go, okay, well, you know, I know that there are bad times that come and go, so I should be ready for those, but I should also be looking at uh, the positive side of things too and be looking to take advantage. And that's where, it sounds funny, that's sort of where we want to sit, right? We want to be right in the middle, hot and cold. And it's, when you're talking about hot and cold and you go look in the Bible, it's like, oh, this is the bad thing. But when we're talking about preparedness and getting ready for hard times, it's like, it's as easy as being out of debt. You're like, well, I don't want to be in debt because what if an unexpected bill comes and I am in debt? Now I can't pay my debts, right? Um, you want to be out of debt. It's like that simple. And so back in 2010 and talking about the whole without faith part, the, you know, I was actively going to church. Um, I started seeing these things that were going to come to the earth and said, hey, we got to start getting some emergency food. We're going to start seeing inflation. I started talking about, you know, this church is everywhere I could go. Actually, I was spun up like a top and you couldn't stop me. And I would talk about how, if you want to beat the, there's this coming inflation wave. And I used to explain it very similar to what happened in the late seventies. And I said, if you want to beat the stock market uh, percentages, all you got to do is go buy some canned food. There's, and I talked about, there's gonna be days where there's gonna be lines at the gas station. We've already seen that, but it hasn't gotten that bad yet, but we've seen it before, right? We've seen the massive lines for toilet paper. We've seen stores rationing things and all that kind of stuff. So we just went through one phase, but we're about to go through another phase of that. And, you know, everybody would just mock me and just say I had no faith. And a lot of times, you know, Christians, people that call themselves Christians, they just go, you know, uh, God, had, it's God's in control, God's in control. And they didn't really read the Bible because the entire Bible is stories about a warning that came. God would give a warning to someone that really listened to him, right? And that person would relay a warning of something that's coming to the earth, uh, whether it be something God's doing or something Satan's doing. And then there was a choice that had to be made. That person that heard, do they have ears to hear, um, would have to take that in and go, well, am I going to sit on my butt and do nothing about it? Or am I going to you know there's a reason why I'm being warned? And, uh, you know, we're supposed to be God's hands and God's feet, you know, ever since he sent his son down to die for our sins. They're like, all right, you now have him in you just 
through the Holy Spirit. Let's let's rock and roll. And people just take the lazy way out. Well, God's just going to take care of it. God's going to take care of my bills. God's going to take care of the future impacts of the economy. It's just God, God, God. Yet in 2008, and I was warning all of these same people, not the same groups, I was getting, you know, told, you should probably leave <laughs> the church many times. Um, because I was always like, hey, you need to get out of this speculative real estate. You guys have cars you can't afford. We're about to hit a recession. This was, you know, prior to the Great Recession. And they all lost their homes. I said, okay, well, we're, how'd your faith work? It, it didn't. Uh, you all obviously all lost your homes. Uh, I got impacted as well, even knowing beforehand and trying to do everything I could to sell everything I had. I still got caught in three catastrophic economic failures in life that had to do with a couple of deaths in my family, renter, all this crazy stuff that happened, totally out of my control, right? But God saw me through it. Well, in, in you know, from 2010 till now, or let's say 2010 till 2019, you know, I'd, I'd exhausted all my resources. I'd been kicked out of every place I could think of. And um, I was I was sitting there, um, you know, just dumbfounded. I I had saved up. I bought some food. I bought some silver. Uh, I got out of debt, except for my house payment, right? And and then 2010 or 2020 comes along, and I watched the church completely abandon its faith. Uh, all of a sudden, nobody believed in healing. <laughs> nobody believed in uh, anything really. They just sort of walked around like zombies with masks on. And, and I watched it and what really made me sad, what grieved me was this is the precursor, the whole world having to bow down to what the government said you're supposed to do, right? To the mark of the beast that's coming. And I personally believe you're gonna see that within about 20 years. And the reason why I say that is because it says very clearly in the Bible that um, one generation will not pass um, uh, after the, uh, the time when Israel establishes itself as a nation, reestablishes itself, right? And so we've got this timeline. There's always all these arguing about dates and all this crap. I think it's just the, the stupidest thing ever. It's like arguing, are you pre-trib or post-trib? I just think it's dumb. Like, like, why don't you just prepare for the worst and hope for the best, right? It's just super simple. We spend more time arguing over that or the color of the carpets that the new carpet should be at the church than like really getting down to like people's hearts and going, Look, you're sick. We've, we've got something for us. God gave us fasting and he gave us prayer. You're, you're broke. God gave us tithing and gave us prayer. Um, and don't repeat the same prayer. If you keep repeating the same prayer, then obviously you have no faith. And so I saw this happen with the church and it really grieved me, but this is what got me excited. And I'm going to get into this how to prepare stuff too. When, when the flu hit, hit the world, and I started seeing censoring on all fronts. That's what gets me really excited. I'm like, okay, there's the truth, right? When people get angry when you say something to them um, or you get, get censored, you already know there's truth behind those words, right? So that's how you go down that rabbit hole. It's a really easy rabbit hole to follow. And I started seeing people popping out of the woodwork that were just like me. As I started the YouTube channel, I started to see so many people around the world that were hungry for the truth and also hungry for God. When I started preparing in 2010, I didn't have a lot of money. I had side hustles. Um, I always had stuff going, and, but it was like, when you add something new to your plate, you're like, let's say the Lord <laughs> wakes you up one day and goes, hey, there's gonna be a famine in the land, start storing food. It's not my job to question, well, how big is the famine, God? You know, I just, okay, I just started doing it. And what I found was as I started doing it, and I'll give you an example of what happened, miraculous, because I've told you about my tithing. I've done a video about tithing and how amazing it is. And I've got nothing to benefit. I do actually have something to benefit. Um, you're not, by you tithing, I'm not making any money. But by, by you tithing, I get to share in your joy of watching Holy Cow. Literally, God is blessing me, right? When I started buying food, it was expensive. I didn't have a lot of money. And I remember one day I bought a, a bucket worth of that uh, freeze-dried food. It was like 20 years shelf life. Because I just wanted to be like the Ron Popeil of preparers. Just set it and forget it. Just put it in the closet. You're good to go for 20 years. And it was really expensive though. And I ordered uh, some buckets. And what I did is I called around to some of my church members. And I said, hey, you guys believe the same way I do. If we buy a handful of them, we can get a discount. And they said, yeah, let's do it. So we all pulled our money and we bought some buckets. And literally what showed up was a pallet, just a pallet of this stuff. I'm like, what in the heck? So I called up the company 
and they were just really super nice. They're like, oh man, even just the cost of getting it back would cost so much. And they go, here, we'll tell you what, would you like to buy it for cost? And I go, yeah, absolutely. And so I called around to some more church members. We div divvied it up based on the cost and we got a smoking deal. We, we all had literally, you know, two years for each of our families set up in like, I don't know what it was. It was like 10 of those buckets. They just set aside. It was a miracle, right? And then I started buying up silver. And, and what I found was as I just did what the Lord said, because of the faith, the act of faith of doing it, right? All of a sudden, like extra overtime would come up or a, a deal where I flipped the trailer would come up and, and it just would start flowing and flowing. And even regardless of the price, I started buying it at $18. It went up to 50 bucks and then obviously subsequently crashed, right? I was buying it from 18 all the way to 50. Yeah, I was getting excited. The price is going up. I was a little more bummed than anything. I'm like, man, it gets more expensive. But as it crashed, I was buying it on fundamentals. But really the, the most basic fundamental was this was God's money. And God showed me a currency collapse that was going to come someday. And I'm like, I wasn't putting all my money into it, right? He started making waves, just absolute waves where just money started to flow. And so I was buying it and hey, a trailer came to flip and I'm buying more. And then but ultimately it was a house and uh, sold my house in 2018. I bought Bitcoin and silver, right? Stored all away. I went and got it vaulted because there's no way I was going to keep that in my house. Um, and my, uh, you know, the Bitcoin did good. All that stuff was great, right? And it was crazy because I kept going back to the church to try and warn. And everybody would tell me, oh, you don't have a lot of faith. You don't have a lot of faith. And I'm like, what are you, you're like the one that without faith, you're literally doing nothing. And that's, and, and it, it gets old after a while, but I started to realize that most people that go to church and say they're believers, they're not the ones that are going to heaven. Not everyone's going to heaven. Not everyone that says, Lord, Lord is going to heaven. And the sad thing is that most, too many human beings, all of us put too much faith and the people that say they have faith, but really they don't. And in reality, God, there's all these stories in the Bible, not only the warnings, and, and then there's a consequence if you listen or if you don't, right? Like when Egypt, like here, the Jewish people wouldn't even listen to God's warnings. And so he had to use the Jews' enemies, Egypt. They listened to the warnings. They said, what do you mean? There's going to be seven years of famine after seven years of good? Well, it is really good right now. Well, shoot, why don't we start taking grain and storing it up? And sadly, the country that listened became the greatest country on earth at that time. Egypt ran the world because it had so much grain after that seven years. When the famine happened, they had grain to sell to everybody rather than burn it in the fields and waste it. And you see, that's what's happening right now in America and around the world. Is that people are just burning, wasting their priorities, their, their resources. And they should be actually going and doing something with them, right? And you always look back and you regret what you didn't do or you didn't try. And the one thing about being prepared, everyone's like, well, how much food should I have? I'm like, that is an impossible question. For me, it was one year. It's one year. I just, I'm not going too crazy, right? Because you can only have so much food stocks and then pull it up. Well, now with those buckets, you got a couple of years, right? But now look, think about this. I bought those 10 years ago, those 20 year buckets. Actually, I bought them 13 years ago. They're going to hit their expiration date, right? In about eight years, seven years, nothing's happened. <coughs> And people go to church remind me about it all the time. Oh, look, nothing's happened. Actually, no. No, it's actually the opposite. And I don't tell them this, but I'm going to tell you. Because you deserve to know. Because like with this title, it's not clickbaity. People are not going to want to click on this. Most people. But the ones that are hungry for information, they're going to they're gonna click. When you start to do what God tells you to do, these blessings flow in just insane. They're, it's insane. And, and you tithe your 10% and you hold off and, and wait if there's a place to give offerings which are over and above and you're helping people, the money starts flowing in. And in that amount of time, all the people that didn't listen, they would have all been millionaires. In the course of 10 years, all of them would have been millionaires, but they didn't do the basic steps. They are all in the exact same position. I watched them all around town to these days. They're, they're driving the same cars. Maybe they've not gotten new, it's the same level of car. They live at the same house. Um, they have the same job. They've got the same amount of money, if not less now because of inflation. And they don't even know. Most people don't even know what they missed out on because you didn't try, right? You don't know what you don't know until you know it. And 
And I look back and I'm like, okay, how do we help people? Well, one way is you could give people things, right? You can feed people. And that's what I want to do. Um, I, I want to help people. And when God, like, here, I'll give an example. There's a, a super chat here. Thank you so much for the short bus. I always wonder, have I done enough possible? When you start doing something and it's in line with what the Lord told you or what you feel in your heart you need to do, right? A lot of people don't realize that the, <laughs> that gut feeling is actually the Holy Spirit. And uh, we're when you start to do things, more and more starts to come your way, more opportunities, more possibilities. And it just works its way out. And at a certain point, you go, okay, enough's enough. I only need this much, like a year's worth of emergency food. I've got my water filter. That's such a huge one. Holy cow. And just learning about what's in the water. It's more and more crazy every day. Um, but like you have that. And then you start setting aside some gold. You start setting aside some silver. And what happens is after a while, you've got enough. You're like, that's enough. Now I'm going to go and pursue my dreams. Not that you can't pursue them at the same time, but to have that mentality of I'm going to dig a hole out in the desert and I'm going to build a bunker and I'm going to go hide. That's not the way to live. When we die, it's all about what we tried, what we did, what we accomplished, rather than how safe were we. Yeah, you could be out in the middle of the desert in a hole in the ground and be super safe. But is that the way you want to live your life? Sadly, there's a couple of people in this world that want to, but that's not how I want to live my life. I want to get to know more people. I want to experience more things. This earth is beautiful. There's so much beauty and, and intrigue and there's so much in it, you know, and I want to experience as much as I can. And so I can't do that in a hole in the desert. And so we need to have that mentality of just trying. And everybody always wants that number and they always want the date. How much do I need to prepare and what date is it happening? Like, okay, you're, you're, you're foolish then. Because what you're trying to do is get, ju you're just trying to get by. And my thing is, is, okay, let's say this was all to happen tomorrow and you had some food. Do you know how amazing it would be is if you did have some food for other people? I know it's hard to feed people that just rolled their eyes at you. I think the Lord will just take care of them. I'm going to go by, go help people I, I don't know because it's, it's hard. But to think about what you could do to help people and then what kind of blessings are going to come with that. You know, it's one thing to make a lot of money and that's exciting and it's awesome. Trust me. And money buys time. It, it is true. Praise God. I was able to take five months off of work. Right. Um, so my whole thing is, is that uh, money's great, but you know, what's more exciting running into the people that I know came to know Jesus and their lives completely changed by a meeting on the street one day or a coworker that talked to me or talked to you, you know, and, and, and just sort of turn their life around, right? That is a fulfillment. That is something that gives you joy for the rest of your life. Can you imagine being able to, I'll give you an example. My mother, before she died, ran her local Christian women's club. She had a lady, a very old lady came up to her and she says, and she said her last name and, and she said, did you have family that lived over here in, uh, in, in Europe? And she goes, well, yes, we did. And she, she started, and they started talking. They figured out that their families knew each other. And the lady, she's like, your family saved my family's life through the Underground Railroad. They did a little bit more digging. And sure enough, they found information backing all of that up. And you think about that and you go, I want to do that. I want to save people's lives. That's why I became a firefighter. I just... Well, I mean, and girls like it. I mean, come on, let's be honest. I was young and single. Um, it, I wanted the satisfaction and the feeling I went to work and, and I did something, right? Like I helped somebody. Yeah, that's helping someone physically. But can you imagine helping someone mentally right now or nourishing someone? They're phys helping them physically that way too. Like there's not a lot of needs in America. I know there's a lot of homeless, but there's a lot of homeless because the government's just causing them to be homeless, just giving them money, right? You're feeding the bears. What happens when you feed the bears? They just hang around the park and they don't go out looking for food. And the Romans did that. The Greeks did that before their societies collapsed too. But there are genuine needs around the world that I'm like, these are real needs. The governments don't care about them. They're not giving them money. They're not doing anything. 
And it's like, I want to go and help those people. I also want to help people's minds. There's so many people in the, in America, there's mental issues that honestly come down to a lot of demonic stuff. Um, a lot of brains have been firing off in a different direction where really they just need to get realigned. And, and if you don't know what EMDR is, uh, EMDR training, uh, holy cow, it changed my life, being a firefighter and dealing with issues. It's amazing. Go look into it. I don't even know what it stands for. I'm sorry, but EMDR, it's, 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 it's amazing. And I can't find any more people that are trained in EMDR just to pay them to have our veterans go through a line with a strobe light and ask them a handful of questions. And it's, it's scary because some of the greatest problems we're faced with right now in this society, in our world, have the simplest solutions. Well, who has those solutions? Holy Spirit. And very few people that go to church, and I'm, I'm going to be honest with you, you know, nine times out of 10, someone's got a Christian fish on their, their business card, or they talk about, oh, I'm a Christian, you know, beginning like to almost to sell you to use their services. I get screwed every time, almost every time. It's sad. I mean, even in YouTube, <laughs> you're like, it's unbelievable, you know, but then, but then you sit back and you try your hardest to just keep your mouth shut and just keep doing what you're doing. And then you see the react, you see the results. You see the people that didn't screw the other people, the people that take care of other people, the people that are prepared and they're growing, they're being blessed. The other ones think they are, but they're just, they're, they're not, they're just all balled up in their little world. They, Look at me, look at me. You're like, okay, well, it's not much to look at. And so I just want to do this video today because I know there's so many people that are frustrated with people that say they believe in God. And, and then it seems like they just do the opposite of what you would expect them to do. They're going to be everywhere. And I'm one of those people. I've let down so many people in my life. And my prayer is that I stop letting people down. It's like, I'm always saying the wrong things. I'm always doing the wrong things. I always got my foot in my mouth. You know, and that's, I mean, this reason why I do all these lives now, it's like, I'm being held accountable by you. I've, I've screwed up a couple of times. Like, ah, I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> but at least you know it's me, right? And I just want to share with you that, that when you start to prepare for these hard times coming and you don't have a whole lot, but you take a little bit of that, you give it away to someone, 10% at tithing. Watch what happens. And you don't have to be living in a bunker. God's called you to be victorious and you need to be in a point where you really realize that, you know, this last three years, I can't believe there's still, and I, my heart breaks for them. People that are running around wearing masks and it, it just breaks. People have lost so much faith, but in the same sense, a lot of people have gained a lot of faith in the last couple of years. Cause like this uh, world's going to crap in a handbasket right now. Everyone's going nutball. Um, but I feel like I'm different. Well, you, you are different and you are a, a minority, but out of that minority, I mean, look, there's 1500 people that are just even watching this video right now. They're going, who's this nutball? There's 618 people that hit the thumbs up. And if you're agreeing, if the words that I'm saying is, are resonating with you, you feel it in your spirit, right? That means there's 600 now 22 people that agree with you that understand what I'm talking about. So you're not alone. The only question is how do you find those people? And sadly, how you find those people is you, you have a megaphone where you're telling everyone, hey, is it, come on, the world's going crazy. This is insane. We need to do something about this, right? And you're yelling, but the problem is you're yelling inside your church, your school, your work, your families. They don't, they don't care. You're nothing to them. Sadly, you're nothing to them because if they had to acknowledge that you were able to accomplish more than them, then they're just looking at themselves and going, oh, crap. Who am I? Most people don't do that, but I do it. I try and hang out with people of greater competence, greater efficiency, greater hearts, greater lifestyles, uh, greater than everything that I do so that I can become great. Because if I don't hang out with those people and I'm sitting in an echo chamber or I'm hanging out with a bunch of people that are not so bright, I become not so bright, right? So what happens is you need to get your megaphone and you need to build a bigger one. So if you're truly sitting there going, I'm the only one, I'm, you know, get a bigger megaphone because you will attract good people. If you are good, you will attract good people. It was my prayer. 
And it felt like it didn't go answered for 10 years. I would pray it all the time. I'd be driving my truck around town and I'd go, God, I want to meet good men. I want to meet strong men. And what I look back now, and I look back on like, I never ask, well, why didn't you just put those men in my life? There was a point where he was right there with me. And he said, I was because I was building you to be a strong man. He didn't want me to rely on other men. He wanted me to rely on him. So there's going to be times where you feel alone. And just know that even during those times where you're preparing for all this stuff and nobody around you is listening, there's going to be a time where you are going to be called to be a great man or a great woman. You're going to have to make hard decisions. But those hard decisions are going to bless you, not only monetarily, but it, you're going to have joy in your heart. You, I, I've, been, I've been very blessed to, to work in the career that I've worked in, and I'm ready to move on. You know, but the thing is, is that my thing is, let me hold on. Let me answer a question real quick. There's a super chat. This is the question. Ninja, people are, are noticing numbers after their names in recent days, not in live comments, but in comments. This is disturbing to me. What does it mean? I have to, uh, I have to address this every once in a while there's a ton of scammers out there people that just want to rob you and on in the comments section youtube is these tons of these scammers that look like me or they look like other people on youtube and they have these numbers in their name um and they'll try and literally get you to give them money and sadly literally thousands of people a day fall for this scam i i don't understand why it's possible um i get emails every day like is this you texting me it's not me it's a scammer but again, that go and it really it breaks my heart when I see people fall for this stuff. But you have to look at how it's motivated. Or these people are feeding thieves in the dark or trying to attack you, feeding on your insecurities or your desire to get around other people of like mindedness, like me on YouTube. And it breaks my heart. And and going, it actually ties into what I, the Lord showed me was, you know, building a strong man. And having sometimes to be quiet, having being not, I'll tell you this, I have been around some very famous influential people lately, and it has been the weirdest thing. And I haven't approached them. Like we'll be in an airport by ourselves and it'll be like good people. They feel like I want to do work with this person, but I, it wasn't the time and I felt it. It's not the time to go push it. And, and I had to tell the Lord, I said, you know what, if and I'm going, okay, why are you putting these people in front of me? Like, I don't even say their names, like, but we're like sitting in an airport and there's nothing, nobody in the room. We're just sitting there by ourselves. And I'm having to find myself going, is this the time to talk to this person? Because I'm trying to really be obedient. It's a weird thing, but I'm just telling you this. Maybe some, someone needs to hear this right now because I have always forced things to happen in my life. And nine times out of 10, when I forced it to happen, it didn't work out one time it would work out, but it just, it wasn't meant to be. And I'm trying really carefully to just tread lightly. And so anyway, I just wanted to talk to you guys today about that because I think there's so many people that are frustrated and angry and uh, the, our best days are ahead of us, but we need to start preparing. We need to do something. And when you start to do something, God will just literally open up a floodgate. You watch it'll, it'll totally bless your life. So guys, I thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great day. I'm sure I'll be around later. I'm putting out a video that we put a lot of work into. I'm really hoping it, it goes does well. Just showing everybody what's coming with commercial mortgage-backed securities. All right, that being said, the Economic Ninja is out.